Hi everyone, this is Dr. Orkun Bajic and today we are going to talk about qualitative data, in other words, categorical data, and we are going to look at how we can create the frequency distributions, relative frequency distributions, and percent frequency distributions when we are given a qualitative data and we are going to use a um, bar chart to represent this qualitative data graphically. So when we talk about a qualitative data, what we are essentially talking about is a data set that has a number of categories in it. So this means that we don't see numbers, but we are seeing a set of entries that can be grouped as categories all right so again we can list the frequency distribution we can list the relative frequency distribution percent frequency distributions and using these distributions we can display these data graphically and we are going to use a bar chart to do this so let's look at this data set i have a sample of 40 sales let's say that I have a furniture store and I sell a number of furniture items and in this case I focus on three types of furniture which are the bed frame the dining table and the sectional sofa so I have a sample of 40 sales so let's say that I looked at my past 40 sales and then I listed what items were sold in these 40 sales. So for example, my first item that I sold was a bed frame, the second one was a dining table, sectional sofa, another dining table, another dining table, and so on. So given this data set, I'm going to list the frequency distribution here. So I have a template on the right hand side here, and I'm going to list the items and then I'm going to create the necessary distributions. So the first item is sectional, all right? So I have a sectional sofa in my list, so I'm going to list sectional. One thing to be careful about is that you need to type this exactly the same as how it is typed in your data set. So it has to be the exact same um, format. And then we have dining table, and then finally we have bed frame. So we have three different items and I list all of them in my table. So next step is to find the frequency of the sectionals in my data set. So when I say frequency distribution, what I mean by that is how many times does this item show up in my data set? That is what I mean by frequency distribution. So the number of times I see sectional in the data set. So to be able to find it, I'm going to use an Excel function, which is count if that will automatically count how many sectional sofas I have in my data set. So keep in mind that sectional, the item name is listed in cell H three all right so sectional is in h3 you can also verify this on the top left part of excel so keep h3 in mind so i'm going to start typing count if function so count if open parentheses and you are going to see that count if requires two inputs the first one is the range and the second one is the criteria so range means where is your data set and the answer is it is in this selected region, so A2 to E9. And then I'm going to put comma, and the criteria is what is next. And what it means is essentially, Excel is asking, what am I looking for in this region that you just selected? And the answer is sectional. Again, like I said previously, we are going to put the cell ID in which the name sectional is listed. So H3 is where sectional is listed. So I put that in my function and close parentheses. And if you hit return on a Mac, you will see that we have 10 sectional sofas in this data set. Let's follow the same approach again, count if 
the region didn't change so I'm going to select the same region comma the criteria is in this case in h4 so I'm going to type h4 and then that will give me how many dining tables I have in my data set which is 15 and last count if select your region comma in this case where is the last item which is the bed frame it is in h5 so if you type h5 you will see that we have 15 bed frames so as you see in my table i put something called total which will represent the, the sum of the observations in each category so to find the total i'm going to use an excel function which is sum and I'm going to select all of these values and then close parentheses, which will give me 40. So it tells me that I have 40 different items, which I already know that I have 40 items in my frequency distribution. So this is a way to verify that my calculations are correct. So the second um, frequency distribution will be a relative frequency distribution. In a relative frequency distribution, what we do is we find the proportion of a certain category within the total number of observations. So what we do is we take the frequency of the item we are interested in. So in this case, the first item is sectionals. So we start with the frequency of sectionals, which is 10 in cell I3. And we divide this by the total number of observations which is 40 okay so if I divide 10 by 40 it gives me the relative frequency of sectional sofas in my data set that value is 0.25 I'm going to do the same uh, calculation for the dining tables the frequency of dining tables is 15 and then I'm going to divide this by the sum which is I6 so let's look at these two uh, cells. The first one has I3 divided by I6. And the second one has I4 divided by I6. So what is going on here is that I am dividing the frequencies by the same value, which is 40, that is in cell I6. So what I can do in these situations is if I constantly repeat using the same cell, I can put dollar signs to make sure that if I drag this function all the way down or to the right depending on the format I keep using the same value that is in the same cell so if I hit return you're going to see that I have the um, dollar signs here and all I need to do now is to go to the bottom right and drag this all the way down which will automatically calculate the relative frequencies. Again, this was just I6 before, and with this new method, you can see that the dollar signs also carried over. And if we look at the last one, you can see that even though I4 now became I5, I6 stayed the same because it is what dollar signs do on Excel. So these are my relative frequencies. Therefore, I have the relative frequency distribution and I'm going to look at the sum. Um, an easy way to do this is this function here is finding the sum of these frequencies. And what I can do is I can click on this cell and go to the bottom right and drag it to the right, which will transfer the function to the right so it basically now is summing j3 to j5 which is what i'm looking for and that sum is one which is correct because the sum of the relative frequencies must be equal to one and last percent frequencies they are straightforward basically you need to have the relative frequencies multiplied by 100 so relative frequency of sectional sofas is 0.25 multiply it by 100 you have your percent frequency for sectional sofas all you need to do now is to go to the bottom right drag this down and it will calculate the percent frequencies for you so what we can see here is 
Instead of 38, I am seeing 37.5, and that is definitely because of the formatting. So this is, if I select all of these and right click on my mouse and say format cells, and if I go to number and select three decimal places, you are going to see that these are actually 0.375, which matches what I found on my percent frequencies. And the whole reason why I got 0.38 was the formatting because I wanted to display two decimal points. And if you round this up, that will become 0.38. So these are my percent frequencies. And last step is to get the sum. And I can find it easily by dragging this function to the right which will show me the sum of K3 up to K5, which is 100. That is correct because the sum of the percent frequencies is always 100. So next step is to plot a bar chart using what I listed. So bar charts represent the frequency distributions. And to plot my bar chart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my items and the frequencies. Okay, so you select the items and the frequencies. So then we are going to go to the top menu, insert, and then you are going to see a, an option here. When you go over it, it's going to show column. And if you click on it, it's going to give you a bunch of options. For now, we are only interested in the first one, which is called the clustered column. If you stay on it and you will select it and that will give you the bar chart. So let's make it a little bigger. So here is my bar chart. So as you can see, we have sectional, dining table, and bed frame listed. So what the, this graph tells me is you have a category which is called sectional. And if you go over it, it shows me the value, which is 10. And that tells me the frequency of sectional in my data set is 10. The second category is dining table. If you go over that bar, it's going to show 15, which is the frequency of dining tables. And last, your category is bed frame, and you have 15 of them is what this bar chart represents. So one thing to fix is the chart title. So we don't want to see chart title here. Uh, for now, we can simply say a bar chart, but usually you want to use a title that will describe what your graph displays. So you can say a um, sample of 40 sales or whatever your context is. All right. So don't leave it as chart title. Make sure that it gives the reader enough information to understand what that graph explains. So um, in this video, we talked about a qualitative data and then we listed the frequency distribution, relative frequency distribution and percent frequency distributions. And by using the frequency distributions, we plotted a bar chart and we talked about how we can read a bar chart in this video. So thank you so much for watching and I will, I will see you in the next one.